Uh, I will be talking about bears in New Mexico, but also <clears throat> a lot of the information is from Alaska. Our bears aren't going to be that much different except for what they may eat uh, than your New Mexico bears. Here's some more information. I have spent 45 years uh, working in remote parts of Alaska <clears throat> and recreating there. And I have encountered 263 bears that were aware of me or were extreme aggressive, aggressive encounters. There's an unknown number of bears that I've seen that were not aware of me and probably another unknown group that were aware of me that I was unaware of them. Also, I'd like to acknowledge uh, bear biologists at the USGS, especially Tom Smith and Steve Amstrup, for <clears throat> really building the bear behavior component of this um, class that I teach to others. And I have, as Krista mentioned, been teaching this class since 1978, uh, including some from the National Lab in Los Alamos. Okay, question number one, Krista. The question is, were there grizzly bears in New Mexico? Okay, everyone has answered. And 74% of participants said yes, 26 said no. Okay, the correct answer. Yes, there were grizzly bears in New Mexico. Most of them were eliminated by 1921 with the last one killed near uh, Silver City in 1931. Interesting enough, there was some consideration in 2009 by New Mexico Fish and Game and others to reintroduce the grizzly bear to New Mexico. And I'm going to come back to that topic a little later. <clears throat> um, and I should point out now that brown and grizzly bears are the same bear. The distinction in Alaska is largely geographic. The bears out on the Alaska Peninsula and in southeastern Alaska and where I live south of the Alaska range are all considered brown bears. Everything in the interior is considered a grizzly, but they are the same bear. The brown bears tend to be larger because they have a better food source uh, with the abundant salmon streams in their areas. Interestingly enough, the genetics of some of these brown bears in southeastern Alaska is more polar bear genetics than grizzly genetics. And it's important to note <clears throat> that both the polar bear and the grizzly or brown bear evolved from a common ancestor. But you guys now have just the black bear. Population is somewhere up to around 9,000. It hasn't changed much when I checked. Um, this map shows the distribution of uh, black bears and brown and grizzly bears. So the color, kind of a grayish green color that extends across southern Canada, the east and west coast, and even down into Mexico is the habitat that's basically exclusively black bear. The dark brown color is where both black and grizzly bears overlap in territory. Black bears evolved in forested regions and when threatened, they tend to escape by climbing a tree, for example. Some areas they will not ha ha uh, go into hibernation and their colors vary extremely. <clears throat> they can be more likely predatory than a grizzly bear, especially mature males in areas where they have little human contact or bears that are sick or injured. Question two. I will get the poll up, but we did have a question. Is that 9,000 for U.S. or New Mexico? New Mexico. Okay. 9,000 in New Mexico. Are all black bears black? No. Oh, I need to turn someone's audio off. They're giving the answer. <laughs> okay, so everybody got that, I guess. Yes. Uh, Yep, 100%. All right. And, and that's correct. The color, in fact, the most common color in New Mexico is cinnamon, but they're also black, brown, and blonde. In Alaska, we have black bears with white patches on them and a grayish blue color, which is called a glacier bear. 
and some are brown. In a local area of British Columbia, the black bears are actually white and they're not, um, they're not albinos, that's a natural coloration. The native people call them spirit bears. <clears throat> In New Mexico, the black bears can weigh up to 400 pounds. Uh, they may live as long as 25 years and den under outcrops, <clears throat> tree root balls. And they've even been known to den in hollow cottonwood tree trunks as well. They will emerge from their dens in April and their average territory can be up to 50 square miles. This is actually a brown bear den. I have never seen a black bear den. That's me climbing out of the den and there was enough room in this den for three adults. This brown bear den is only five miles from my house. Uh, here's, <clears throat> I'm going to come back, I said I would come back to this topic uh, about um, bears in, New, uh, grizzly bears in New Mexico, and I have a hypothesis that this may actually happen naturally uh, in time. This, this map shows what I call the wonderlust factor for a particular black bear <clears throat> who was captured in northern New Mexico. Uh, and traversed all the way up north of Colorado uh, Springs. The little squares denote this pre-denning traverse and the circles denote post-denning traverse. So he covered quite a, quite a distance. We've seen in Alaska, two polar bears that have traveled from the Arctic coastal plain south of the Brooks Range, 150 miles. And interestingly enough, I saw an article uh, about a brown bear in northwestern Spain on the border with Portugal in an area that hadn't seen bears for 150 years. So it wouldn't surprise me if some of the <clears throat> grizzly bears in other states get this wanderlust factor and actually visit New Mexico at some point. <clears throat> the bear skull on the right Bear skull on the right is the grizzly bear. That is a three-year-old grizzly bear. The bear skull on the far left is a three-year-old black bear. And the bear skull in the middle is a 20-year-old black bear. The grizzly bear skull, uh, my wife and I found when we were picking blackberries, somebody had shot it and either left it or never recovered it. And, uh, <clears throat> So I reported it to Fish and Game and they let me keep the skull for uh, educational purposes. The middle black bear, the old one, was actually wounded severely in a fight. One of his ears was ripped off and his low, two lower canines were broken with the nerve endings still sticking out. Um, Both, like I said, the left-hand black bear and the right-hand grizzly bear are both three-year-olds. And this is the age that the Alaska fishing game says gets most, uh, gets in trouble most often with humans. So you can look at the bears and get an idea of age and maturity. This picture shows a black bear <clears throat> that's young. And the thing to look at is how long the legs look in comparison to the body. They look real leggy, so to speak. In this case, and this, this bear is actually uh, in the backyard of my daughter and son-in-law's yard just down the street from the peak building. And you can see the difference here. The legs look real stubby and the body looks massive. This is an older and mature black bear. How do we get into trouble with bears? <clears throat> Garbage. 11 years ago was my first encounter with a New Mexico black bear. I was staying at my daughter and son-in-law's home and I heard this noise uh, late at night and I kept looking out trying to find out what it was and there out in the backyard was this pile of white stuff that I had no idea what it was. And eventually the bear came out and uh, I woke everybody up so that we could look at this animal. <clears throat> And then we called Fish and Game, or no, called the police department, and they sent an officer out, and he 
scared it off with a rubber slug from his shotgun. And then uh, we went out to see what this white stuff was, and it was from the diapers from my grandson that the bear had taken out of the garbage. In conditions of poor, uh, poor natural food and drought conditions, there have been as many as 25 bears seen in Albuquerque. And that incident, incident that I mentioned that I first saw 11 years ago, that officer when he left had two more bears to go deal with. In Alaska, we get into, the bears get into real problems with garbage, barbecues, uh, bird feeders, chicken coops, and so forth. And this um, listing starting in 2012 down to 2019 lists the number of bears shot defense of life and property. That's what DLP stands for. And this includes both black and grizzly bears or black and brown bears in our area where these most of them have been put down by either the police department or Alaska Fish and Game because they've been habituated to human garbage. So if we want to save our bears, we've got to deal with garbage. And I noticed uh, <clears throat> 11 years ago when I called Fish and Game about this issue, they said that the communities in the local area, Española, White Rock, and Los Alamos, that the public didn't want to have bear-proof garbage cans. Obviously, that has now changed, and I think that's a good idea. But remember, bird feeders and barbecues are other things that may attract your, your bears. And you don't want to have them end up being killed like happened here. So the circumstances where people get into problems with bears are shown in this chart. And this is a compilation from one of Tom Smith's papers and presentations is surprise at close distance is the most common circumstance where we get into problems with bears. Curiosity, this a bear may be attracted to you for uh, curious reasons um, and then become aggressive, especially depending on what you do as it approaches. Biologists have found, for example, that uh, backpacking tents or your camping tents, those that are yellow, orange or red tend to attract bears. They're curious about the color. They do see color. Whereas neutral colors such as gray or forest green do not seem to attract the bears. As we go down the list here, invading personal space, which is kind of like getting too close, especially if you're surprising them, predatory, wounded during hunting, defending a food source, or provoking a charge by yelling or throwing or even running away from a bear can stimulate a predatory response. So one of the things that you need to do in bear country is, is make noise. Lots of people like to sing. Uh, we have found that dog whistles work really well to alerting bears to your presence <clears throat> so you don't surprise them and they really don't disturb other people's wilderness experience. The bears are strong and powerful and their mood may change depending on the season. They tend to become very stressed in the fall as they try to get fat for their hibernation and, and winter sleep. Um, if it's a poor berry year or a poor uh, other, in your case, uh, pine nuts and other berries, um, then they may become more stressed. I already mentioned that young ones tend to have most problems with people. How used to people and the degree of habituation is another important factor. They do display curious, defensive, and predatory behavior. It's a real mistake to think a bear is unpredictable. So the, the bear's hearing and eyesight is ab about equivalent to humans and smell, as most of you uh, answered is the most well-developed and most used sense. Okay, a defensive bear is a stressed bear. These, this list of stress signs starting at yawn and extending down into charges are low stress at the top and high stress as you go down that list. If you start to hear huffing, which sounds like a broken steam engine, or jaw popping where they snap their teeth together. Um, 
salivating. It looks like they have a can of shaving cream coming out of their mouth with just lots of foam. These are really upset and defensive bears. And what they might be defending or defensive about is either the surprise at close distance, protecting a food source, or a sow protecting her cubs. A curious bear will stand and look, uh, trying to get a better view, or even may move downwind to catch your smell to see if it can identify what you are. It may zigzag towards you uh, to get a better view and find out what you are. Predatory bear in Alaska, 8% of the attacks are predatory or have been predatory. They're not restricted to black bears, but it's more common with black bears. And a key thing for a recognizing a predatory bear is it will show little or no stress signs. It may circle, it will be intently focused on you and persistent. And and uh, if the attack is prolonged, most offensive attacks don't last very long, but if it is prolonged and that is not well defined, then it's most likely a predatory attack in which you need to fight that bear to reduce injury. Charges, <clears throat> there are actually three charge types and I think they are in many cases, the terms are misused. In a real charge and a false charge, the bear's muzzle will be depressed, the ears will be laid back on the head, and the fur, the hackles between the shoulder may be uh, raised. The only difference then between a real charge and a false charge is that in a false charge, the bear will not make contact. It may break off at quite close distance. In contrast, the mock or bluff charge, the bear's ears will be erect, the muzzle will be more horizontal, he'll be looking at you, and it may make short spurt-like charges. Basically, the bear is saying, get out of my space, move away. Most attacks have happened in Alaska at less than 50 yards, 91%, and almost half of them happen at less than 10 yards. So this is, happens at really close distances. A bear will cover 50 yards in a little over three seconds, that full charge. So if you want to avoid bears, move to Hawaii. Make lots of noise in the field. I mentioned the dog whistle, air horns have been used. Uh, <clears throat> bear bells are real popular up here, but the bear biologists have determined that, that the, have no impact on the bears whatsoever. Their hypothesis is, is that the bears hear that and consider it just background noise like we might if we hear a chickadee or some other birds in the woods. Attacks on groups of three or more are almost non-existent. Solo people are the ones most in danger from a bear. Be aware of your surroundings. And I've actually had uh, several bears that I've spotted when I've been working that I actually spotted with my binoculars when I was glancing down the route that I would be traversing to look at uh, geologic features. If the bear is unaware of you, do not make the bear aware of you. And if you do have a deterrent, get it out and get it ready. Watch the bear or move away from the area. <clears throat> if the bear is aware of you, first thing you should do is get whatever deterrence you have ready. Talk to the bear calmly if you can to identify yourself as human. If you're in a group, get together. Three people 20 yards apart are three single individuals. They are not a group. You need to be right together. Move away facing the bear, watching it. Don't run. Don't yell at it. Don't throw things at it and leave the area. If the bear attacks, use your deterrent. We're going to look at the tracks now. This is actually a black bear <clears throat> in back. Black Bear Track in New Mexico. 
The forward one is actually the rear paw and the one behind it is the front paw. And right now, since all you have are black bears, uh, it's pretty easy to, to realize that all these tracks are gonna be black bear tracks. But if you ever get one of them that wanders in from Colorado or Montana, certainly the size would be bigger than the black bear. But one of the ways you can tell is if you draw a line from the base of the big toe to the base of the little toe, that line definitely cuts across the paw pad uh, distinctly. Whereas if you look at a grizzly bear and would draw that same line, it's tangential or just barely crossing the toe pad, the foot pad. Okay, I'm gonna talk about deterrence now a little bit. Um, pepper spray was first used by a grizzly bear study group in Montana in 1985. It really didn't start showing up in Alaska for quite a few years after that. When you buy pepper spray, you should look at the can and recognize the active ingredients should be 2% or greater. And those ingredients are the, ole the resin of oleocapsicum plus the major capsicinoids. Spray is not uh, an irritant, but it's an inflammatory agent that impacts the vascular system, messes up your eyes, causes gagging, and burning of exposed skin. <clears throat> Pepper spray used to be labeled bear repellent. And unfortunately, there were people that sprayed it on their bodies like they would spray mosquito repellent and uh, this caused some issues for them. And people also sprayed it on their rubber rafts when they were floating down rivers and the bears would come in and tear up their boats. Um, one thing to realize is that most of the cans that are sold like at REI have six seconds of spray in them. And um, there was an incident where a fellow was treed by a grizzly bear in British Columbia. Fortunately, he had two cans of pepper spray. He emptied one can on the grizzly bear with no apparent impact. So he started to think about it and he realized maybe after the bear roared or growled at him and had to do an inhalation that he'd spray it and get the spray into the, into the lung area. He did that and that bear left the area immediately. In a real charge, that's gonna be hard to judge the breath cycle of a bear, but um, most of the people that have problems with bears, uh, bear spray being effective, they discharge it too soon at too great a distance. You have to let the bear get close and you don't wanna just depress the the uh, trigger on it, you wanna use short little one to two second bursts of spray. On bears, the impact lasts 10 to 30 minutes. Black bears are physiologically less bothered by spray and 62% of the time they will either not leave or leave and come right back. The uh, spray contains a flammable solvent listed here, acetone, methylene chloride, propylene glycol, so forth. They are restricted in aircraft. And in fact, there are some charter helicopter companies that will not allow us to even carry pepper spray uh, in or outside the aircraft because of the flammable solvents. <clears throat> These flammable solvents actually increase the solubility, improve the uh, use of spray in cold temperatures, enhancing the atomization and how long it stays in suspension in the air. Uh, when they issued pepper spray to uh, individuals involved with the oil spill cleanup in Prince William Sound, they found that 5% of them had lost propellant. Usually that happens when somebody gets a can of pepper spray, they always wanna see how it works and so they discharge it for a second or two. The seals in the, <clears throat> in the spray are rubber and they're very susceptible to temperature changes, especially heat. 
And if it's already been discharged once, this weakens that seal and you can leak propellant. I would suggest if you get a can that's brand new, put it in a bucket of water and see how much it displaces and periodically check it to see that it displaces the same amount. If it floats higher, then you've lost propellant. The residue of bear spray is a bear attractant. And it's interesting to me that this is not put on the cans of pepper spray. To, uh, to flush it, copious amounts of cold water, if it's on uh, clothing, then you might have to wash it several times with a simple green. Uh, it naturally de degrades in up to three days. This is uh, the bear chewed this can of pepper spray. <clears throat> All right, yeah, important things to think about if you carry pepper spray is that the distance that it travels is about half its advertised amount. I have an old can of uh, pepper spray that I use for training purposes that's empty and it gives a range of 15 to 30 feet. Newer cans say 30 feet and just my last class when we tested it and measured it, it was 12 feet. When I taught um, the uh, lab people in Los Alamos a few years ago, I think it actually did less. There may be an elevation impact on this. Others, other ways that it can be decreased is by wind, the age of the can, leaking of propellant uh, in humidity, and I would add heavy rain to that also. All these things can impact the effectiveness of it. They do have an expir expiration date, expiration date stamped on the cans now, which pertains to degradation of the propellant, but it's recommended that you replace it yearly anyway. The spray is rated for threats over 40 pounds. So kids and pets should not get sprayed. If you're gonna use pepper spray, you should also get training. And uh, it's really important. Here's uh, results of a class that I trained. This, uh, this actually 35 students, 13 of which were from Los Alamos lab. The average time to get pepper spray into action was 3.7 seconds, 3.7 seconds. And a bear at full charge would cover almost 50 yards in that amount of time. Out of this group of 35, two actually had the spray nozzle pointed at their face, which wouldn't have done them any good. And it's clear to me that they had had no previous training with pepper spray. And again, the bears will cover at full charge, 15 yards a second. This uh, slide is from Tom Smith's 2012 paper where he evaluated 267 incidents where people used firearms to deter aggressive bears, long guns, which include rifles and shotguns. The average distance at which these were deployed was six yards and was successful 76% of the time. And surprisingly, revolvers at four yards were successful 84% of the time. Another deterrent which I've had great luck with is uh, marine signal flares. There's two types. There's a type like shown in this slide, <clears throat> which can be loaded into that plastic pistol. What I like about, about them is that they can be deployed on a bear at greater distance than pepper spray. They're not affected by rain and they're less def, uh, deflected by wind. And the bears don't like them. But there is, and for you guys in New Mexico, this is really important, a severe fire hazard if you fire this in uh, an area that says <clears throat> dry grass or dead wood. And I have actually started fires, but they've all been tundra fires in the areas that I work. There isn't much forest. And the uh, lab people that from Los Alamos that worked on the Arctic Slope, I had recommended that they use flares because they were up there in March 
when the temperatures were freezing and there's lots of snow around and this would have been would be a better deterrent instead of pepper spray under those conditions. Again, a real hazard with fire. So it's probably not the best thing for you guys uh, to be using. All right, so this is going to recap now things that you should do if you see a bear. Stay calm, don't run. This is a time also to get your pets and children under control. If the bear hasn't seen you, move away, leave the area. If it is aware of you, talk to the bear calmly if you can to let it know that you're a human. A surprised bear is going to be a dangerous bear. Don't approach the bears. Don't run. Don't make any sudden movements. And especially look for cubs. You do not want to come between a mother and her cubs. Bears will often run away from us. But if it feels cornered or threatened, it could attack. If it does attack, you need to fight back aggressively. Bears, black bears have been driven away when people have fought back with rocks frying pans, sticks, binoculars, uh, <clears throat> again, spray, pepper spray is, is also another alternative. However, if the bear is too close, the cone of pepper spray is very narrow and you can actually miss spraying a bear at close distance, which happened to two uh, geologists a couple years ago. Okay, I think that's, uh, that's it. All right, so if you guys have any questions, you can hop on or you can type it in the chat window. Um, I go for early walks around 4 to 5 a.m. I wouldn't be able to see a bear 50 yards away. What is the best thing I could do to stay safe? Best thing you could do, number one, would be have a deterrent with you, and pepper spray is probably the simplest to deal with right now. Um, Make a lot of noise. Again, the dog whistle has been proven to be very good for alerting bears to your presence so you don't surprise them and it doesn't disturb other people early in the morning. Thank you. Elizabeth would like to know when do bear attacks usually happen? They do happen uh, early in the morning and, and later in the afternoon and early evening, the most common times for bear attacks. Should I keep my garbage inside? My trash got knocked over two days ago. Yeah, if possible, if you can have it in a shed or your garage, that would be best. Uh, we, when we have uh, remains of salmon that we've cleaned, we put them in a garbage bag and put them in the freezer until the day of garbage pickup so that uh, we don't attract bears because we get them in the town in town in Anchorage, like you guys. Is New Mexico bringing grizzly bears back? Well, they considered it in 2009. Uh, obviously, it hasn't happened, and I would be surprised that there would be much public support from that, especially ranchers and, and the public in general. And that's why I mentioned this, what I call the wanderlust factor. I, I wouldn't be surprised if a black, I mean, a grizzly bear would show up in New Mexico just for reasons, who knows why they do this but they do travel long distances for some reason and so you may get one showing up but unless you get a bunch of them they're not going to make a viable population how many bear attacks are there in new mexico uh i only could find out about three in the recent past uh, 2015 16 and 18 Two of those happened by sing to single individuals that were running, and I think it was sow and cub involved. And the third one, I think, was a hunter. Okay. Nationwide, you know, 12 to 15 uh, maulings a year with probably less than five deaths associated in the whole country. Again, thank you for your time, Stephen. Thank oh, you who joined us tonight. And we look forward to seeing everyone again at one of our upcoming programs. I appreciate that. And thank you. Thank you. Stay safe, everybody. Stay safe. We will try. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye.